What up, Tube? What are we doing today? Hey, so we're going to take a break from working on cars and actually do something in the garage. You can see the garage is a mess right now. Uh, this is our steel building. If you look back at my old videos, we put this up when we moved in. Uh, if you hear a little tapping, it's, it's raining out there today. You kind of see it. Uh, so, we decided before it gets too hot, we want to start putting the interior walls up, flat walls. I mean, obviously, they're structural walls, but uh, we want to start building and organizing and doing it how we want. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to walk you through what I did and how I did it. Uh, we bought a ton of wood, a bunch of two by fours in different lengths. And uh, I'll go up here. There's an arc, you can see it there, see? So we're limited in how high we can go with these flat walls. So the arc starts to happen right around seven, the seven foot mark. So what we've done is we've bought a bunch of six, two by four by six foot and two by four by 10 foot. And we made 10 foot sections that are braced, you see here two of them are put together, okay? These are non-load bearing walls. They're just interior walls and, you know, hey, we just wanted something flat and nice. We're gonna insulate behind here with just roll on matted insulation and we are going to put some wall, some, uh, we're gonna do drywall, but we decided that instead of drywall, we're gonna use corrugated plastic sheets. The same type of sheets you would find inside of like a trailer. Uh, it'd be better against any kind of moisture. Uh, it's still a metal building, so there's still some moisture in the humid days uh, because the top part up here, way up there, isn't insulated yet. Uh, so until we get everything insulated, which is gonna be a little ways down the line, we thought anything that was gonna be like a sheet rock or MDF uh, bathroom style uh, sheets uh, might have a chance of getting some moisture in behind the coatings. So we went with, well, we haven't got them yet. We'll have them next week, um, corrugated plastic sheets. So what we're gonna end up doing is going from the floor to the top and they're eight foot tall sheets, so they're gonna bend a little bit. Over here, they're gonna stick up a little bit because it's a flat area, but here on the curve, they're gonna bend a little. Um, that's gonna be fine. We might cut them down to the exact length. Everything's six, about six and a half feet right now. I'm five eight, so this is fine. We're gonna hang our cabinets over here. We have our three cabinets that are hanging on the ground right now, and uh, we're gonna organize that nicely uh, and add another cabinet. I got some. Uh, our workbench will go here in this area. This guy will slide back over, and then I have uh, the back that was just a bunch of flat wood that I put to hang stuff on for me is going to be changed to really nice uh, pegboard style backing that we'll get into once we get that. Should also be arriving hopefully next week. Um, update on time it is. I think March 20th today, 21st, one of those two days. Um, if you know and you're paying attention to what's going on, there's a lot of weirdness going on, a lot of panic, a lot of instability going on. So a lot of us are staying home. A lot of us are trying to be careful. And I reach out without going into any of the ands, or buts. Be careful and stay home and be vigilant, especially with the people you care about, the older people out there, and uh, find a project to work on at home. As you can see, that's what we've done. Got a lot of stuff done. Uh, I'm blessed that my nine to five allows me to work from home. I'm grateful for that. Uh, but in the afternoon, I can't go coach, can't do a whole lot of stuff. Movie theaters are closed, all those things. You know, restaurants, dining are closed, all those things that we're staying in. And, uh, getting a lot done in the afternoons now, in the evenings. <laughs> so, um, back to the garage. 
again, find a project, work on something, but we're going to take these shelves down or disassemble them. They'll be put over here permanently into that corner. Um, and eventually we're going to do a spray foam sticky style insulation up the, up the roof for right now. This is how it's going to be. We just finished all the framing this morning. Um, these areas, I put the, these are just spare pieces of uh, uh, two by eight uh, boards that I had. Cut them down to fit in there. That one, that one I just got lazy and that's all. It's going to be covered anyway so there's a little bit of gap. That one didn't go smooth. But the cabinets are going to hang off that and then um, you know other sections I got a brace put some uh, more 2 by 4s flat like I did over here. You see they're, they're we stuck them up not down. You know what I mean. Um, to give us more surface area to hang our shelves or anything else we want to hang up. So I got to go around with marking, measuring, and getting that all set so when the insulation and um, the sheets come in, we're ready to go. So that's pretty much it. I want to give you an update on what we're working on currently in the garage. Um, when this is all done, it's going to look a whole lot different. The white walls will brighten everything up a lot better. Um, we're pretty excited. I've been procrastinating on this for a while. And uh, yeah, so this has been done over this last week. Uh, decided to do it ourselves. Some of the tools we need. The main thing, if you can borrow, rent, or purchase one, is a nail gun. Man, it made things go so much faster. You can use screws, but you're going to use a lot of deck screws to try to put this all together. You're going to have to pre-drill or else you can, uh, you know, split the wood uh, when you're doing that. We ended up going with a three and a half inch framing nail. Uh, I was lucky enough to have one of my neighbors uh, let me borrow his pneumatic nail gun. Um, made life a lot easy. Be careful with that. Don't let you know, it can only fire if the no, if the end is pushed in, but don't let it bounce and double fire. You know, uh, luckily no incidents. We purchased this guy on uh, Amazon for like, I believe $20. And what it does is allows you to, let me put this guy down here. It allows you to make an, uh, a perfect corner seam. So you put a two by four here and a two by four there and you, you tighten it down by, you know, locking this guy. And it tightens down and it makes this corner Whoop, camera. It makes that corner perfect and it holds it in place. You nail it in, and you, that's how you're we boxing the, uh, the 10 foot by 6 foot area boxes. A couple of them are shorter because we had to cut them down, but that's how we were doing it, and it made it so much easier to do. Other than that, I always have a hammer, always have some measuring tape. You know, this is stuff we always had. Uh, these little clamp guys are awesome to hold two pieces of wood together in place. Uh, you know, power drill, I got a couple of those, a uh, Milwaukee and a Craftsman. Craftsman one's right there, we've had that for a while. 10 inch miter saw, I've had this for years, we used it when we lived in California. Uh, nice little tool, I am not a hardcore carpenter, this I'm very much an amateur. Again, it's just another thing that if you own a home or you want to build something, uh, and it's something you, you you enjoy. It's part of the hobby. It doesn't, in long term, it, it pays off to have those things. Uh, you know, they're not a huge investment. I think I paid 100 bucks for that miter saw brand new on sale at Home Depot. Um, I use this, uh, this is a dead blow hammer to kind of knock the boards into place if I need to. Um, and yeah, so this is it guys. Uh, I'm going to go through real quick and show you how we got them up. We did them in sections, but once the sections were put up so they wouldn't fall, we actually zip tied them in place. I had a bunch of these adapters here, okay, uh, these uh, open-ended ad thread adapters, and uh, we just, I had them because I had the old boards sitting up like that. And uh, we just zip tied the walls on. Now they're not held up by zip ties. That was to put them in place so they wouldn't fall when we were working on them. And then we had a lot of these brackets left over from the building when it was the original materials of the building. So on this back wall, they weren't close enough. So I used, again, that thread insert, or sorry, uh, adapter. 
um, awl thread that we have from when the boards were hanging here to hang up our shells from the past and put this through and now it doesn't move okay over here I'll show you what we did on this side on these walls where they're they come out a little closer to the boards I just ran an extra 2x4 across for the framing put the same bracket reuse these brackets they're already there got a bucket of them might as well use them uh, not a bucket but you know there's a bunch of them so we did a, a nut on this end right here I tighten that guy and then uh, over here so again movements not there that's how we did it there so these walls are braced to the building they're non load bearing so they're just going to be interior nice walls with some insulation some white paneling really clean this up the last thing we're going to do and i'll let you all go for the weekend and we'll get back to some car stuff next week these are 20 foot long two by sixes we're going to make a huge shelf that's going to go from here to there a big old long shelf about three feet deep two and a half three feet deep we haven't decided on the exact measurement yet um, so we can store some of our empty bins and stuff get them off the ground and up there it won't be a walk-on area um, I do have my neighbor who's a who's a contractor and helping us out with some of this stuff so we're doing it right even though it's not load-bearing we don't want it to fall uh, we're gonna be hanging those boards up not flat but obviously up uh, we'll be boxing it in about every 24 inches and uh, it'll be pretty strong I mean, I'm sure we could walk on it but that's not the intention we're going deep enough so we can store stuff up there and uh, or we can just stand on a step ladder reach over and grab something from the back so three feet I think is going to be the magic number and then we'll put a light under it so it'll be right over the workbench it'll only come out from here to about right there so it doesn't take any space away from where the cars will be so yeah that's the plan hopefully in about a week and a half i'll update it and it'll be a whole look a, it'll look a whole lot better we're waiting on some stuff to come in from the box store from home depot y'all that's all i got it's not just cars we have other stuff i guess this is kind of car related because we got a garage where the cars are going to uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this short video, a little break from the Lexus, a little break from other stuff. Uh, make sure to take a deep breath and take a break. Make sure to, to calmly execute your day and be vigilant of what's going on in our world. And uh, make sure that you appreciate the little things. And uh, yeah, enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. Find a hobby. Help keep your mind clear, help keep it a little distracted from, from what's going on, but be vigilant and take care of each other. Have a great week and God bless.